You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mike Benning Rowe and Lee Robertson. And it wasn't till halfway through unpacking my mental trauma that the RAC is not that kind of breakdown service. Oh. oh, hello, hello, hi, and good welcome. You're watching Chewing the Cud, your light hearted weekly look at a world through a very rainbow lens. I'm Mike Benyon Rowe, and with me today is the face that has not been missed by me or the local constabulary. It's Lee Robertson. I'm actually now known as Ed Winchester. Ed Winchester? Yeah. Like the cigarettes? Like, hi, I'm Ed Winchester. Mm. <laughs> OK, there's a choice there. Yeah. I'm bringing you a story about a queen of pop or two. Then we'll get all arty in crafty queens. And we even have a game that you can play along with too. But on screen now you can see our contact details. It's at the Cud TV on your social media. And if you want to catch up with previous episodes, you can always binge us on YouTube. Just look for Chewing the Cud. And you can see the names of people who have reached out and touched our souls. I'll go along the bottom of the screen as Mike gets ready to bring us up to date on the things that you may have missed from the news. It's almost like an autocue's going up, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> in the buzz. <laughs> How do you feel about things that are big unexpectedly? Things that are bigger and you're not expecting them to be bigger. Mm -hmm. It depends how much lubrication is involved. Oh, wow. Hmm. Is there a story there? No, it's just a general observation. <laughs> just an observation. Mm -hmm. More lube is good lube. Th there's always room for lube. <laughs> <laughs> there's always room for lube. <laughs> Sometimes there'll be too much room, but <laughs> it's, it's just a wall, matter of, of, yeah, Kegel exercises. Kegel exercises. Mm. Oh, OK. Mm. Um, well, this is a story about a 61-year-old who has decided to make things big. Just because he can. Um, oh. So he's gone around his, his home and made random objects bigger. Oh, OK. Yeah, you were thinking penis. I thought he'd had a penis thing with, uh, with the, when they <laughs> inject the stuff with his... in it that makes it look like a beach ball. Saline. Saline, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's not that one. No. Um, so, yeah, he's... He's put lots of things together. So he's got a giant plug. That was the first one he made. And he went, you know what I need for a giant plug? A giant fuse. OK. He looks very happy with himself. What, what is he doing it for? Steve, he's doing it because he can. Is it, is it, for, a, is it for a film? Is it it's for a for television? Attention. Oh, That's it's all. for attention. It's it? for attention. He just does it because he can. Um, but he didn't stop at a plug. He went on and did other things too. So he's done a, a big lock, a sharpener, a key, and the first thing he made, which was a um, tape measure. OK. Do, do, um, do they work? Are they working things? The key, not so much, because the lock's not big enough. No, no oh. matter how much lube you use, that key's it's not It's never going to go in. Um, I, I mean, I'm somebody who enjoys small things. I know, you don't like a big thing. Um... Because that makes me feel like a giant. Yes. Um, so I can see where the the appeal of making big things uh -huh. comes from. Um, <laughs> so you feel like a tiny person. So that, yeah, you could feel like a borrower, couldn't he? A borrower. Yeah, a little <laughs> borrower. Um, I'm not mad at it. You're not mad at it. But no. You don't care either way. I don't care enough to kind of go. I'm going to find him on social media, follow him, see what else he's made. Um, but but well done him. Well, well done him. Done, well done him. Well <laughs> done him. Yeah, I think if you're going to have a pastime, making things big is a good pastime. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Does his wife say, "What well, makes up for your small?" Yes. No. Yes. Oh. Um, but no. After he was a former electrician, he retired and went. I feel a bit lost. I need something to do. And you know, after rewiring the house of four or five times, she's like, "What else can I do? Let's make big things." Okay. So yeah. Oh well, you know, if you need anything, Jack, get in touch with him. I would imagine. Exactly. Because <laughs> well, it's a random household thing that nobody really needs. The giant tap. Um, <laughs> the giant hose from the shower, but just the hose. Oh. Anyway, um, moving on. Whenever you want to escape from an awkward conversation, what do you do? Um, I usually just stick my fingers in my ears and go, la, 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 <laughs> he totally and then, then walk off. <laughs> yes, I've actually seen you go, no, bye, I'll yeah. walk away. <laughs> I don't, know why I don't, like I don't care for this, goodbye. <laughs> yeah. Or sometimes just get hold of people's lips and go, shh. 
<laughs> thing is, that's true. It is. That's true. not a comic effect thing. I've seen it. Oh, yeah. Shh. No more talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, for those people who've got some social skills mm. and and so like can deal with people, they've come up with a, a phrase that is so bizarre that no one knows how to respond to it. Okay. Okay. Which is, oh, sorry, I've got to go. I've got fish in the car. I didn't leave. It's very um, Victoria Wood-esque, mm. isn't it, that? It is very Victoria Wood-esque. Mm. <laughs> Gets you out of awkward situations. By saying, excuse me, yeah. I must go, I've got fish in the car. Well, that's too much. It's just, oh, sorry, I've got to go, I've got fish in the car. Okay. Yeah, not that formal. Excuse well, me, what? kind sir. <laughs> Henceforth, <laughs> I I've got a halibut <laughs> strapped into my passenger seat and I must go forthwith. Um... <laughs> Well, I mean, it's an excuse because cause, cause fish would go off in a car. Fish would go off. Yeah. You don't say whether it's a dead fish or a live fish. No. It's no. Slashy, slashy when you're driving, but. Is this millennials that have invented this? And Gen Zers. Oh. We, we've got, you've got another one behind you now. Gen Zers. Gen Zers. Yeah, or Gen Z if you're American. Oh, okay. Yeah, younger than millennials. Just They just need to watch um, an episode of Dinner Ladies. <laughs> and that's it, really. <laughs> I meant to say yogurts and I said breasts. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it, the, that is a dead lady's reference. That's not just me having a moment. <laughs> it, yeah, that's all that the yeah, they, there's nothing nothing is new. Nothing is new, just just reinvented. Don't try and say that you invented it, because you didn't. <laughs> I've been telling people weird shit for years. <laughs> <laughs> Although I will try it next week and see what happens. <laughs> you should do it work. See what reaction I've got, yeah. <laughs> That's what I was about to tell you. How was your weekend? Sorry, I've got to go. I've got Sorry, to fish I've got in the to car. Go. I've got fish in the car. It's very warm today. Um... <laughs> and if um, you've got a fishy smell coming from a warm box, why not share that with us? It's at the Good TV on social media. And that brings us nicely to our story of the week. Now, chemical waste. How do you feel about it? I mean, it's okay if you put some ketchup on it. Oh, okay, yeah. You can get it, you can get it down quite easily that yeah. way. Um, 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 I've never really had a lot of dealings with chemical waste. I mean, unless you count this show. Because that is obvious chemical yeah. waste. Um, <laughs> that's why around the building there's like a whole dead zone. It's like all the plants have died and stuff. Oh, no, that's constant urination. Oh, okay. We need to fix that toilet. Mm. Anyway, um, this is a story about... Well, it's a warning more than anything. Oh, it's about sharks <gasps> who are off their faces on cocaine. Oh, yeah. You see, I like, I, I, I like an animal that's off its face on cocaine. <laughs> like smack rabbit. Smack rabbit. <laughs> Cracoon. Cracoon. Um, um, <laughs> cocaine bear. Cocaine bear. Uh-huh. Um, there's, there's another one called um, Sloth something. <laughs> Sloth Mageddon. Um, yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, it's all fun and games. I, mean, I quite enjoy it. It's all fun and games until someone goes, oh, we're on and down, down. No, this is basically what they found is that um, off the Gulf of Maine, people are flushing a lot of cocaine away. Why are so, they flushing it away? Police knocking on the oh, door. Oh, OK. Like, what are you doing there? Nothing, nothing. Oh, right, flushing OK. Away. It's going into the sea. Sharks are going... <laughs> oh. Is it just the sharks? Well, they're the only ones with the anger problems. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, to be fair, might, pretty might, angry anyway. I was going to say, get a prod with an anger problem. What are you going to do? It's like, I'm a bear. I'm it's a bear. It's like a um, <laughs> throw it at the barbecue and go, I'm having you. <laughs> oh, okay. But yeah, so people are saying, be very careful of sharks that are off the face on cocaine. Because normally, thing. sharks are absolutely fine to go up Cute. and give a hug to. Oh, yeah. give me a Keep them um, behind the gills. Bit of a yeah. Tickle, oh, okay. Yeah. You see, I don't believe it because. You don't believe what? I don't believe off the face on cocaine. No, because, yeah, because. If it drops into the ocean, uh -huh. it'll just disintegrate, won't it? It'll just dissolve. It dissolves into the water, yeah. which is what they're swimming around in, and breathe. Okay. So they get, so they're not like... like if, if I get <laughs> cocaine and like blast it into the air, yeah, you'll breathe it in. Okay. And, yeah. Okay. You'll then be off your tits on cocaine. Yeah. I, I mean, I did do a bump this morning before I came here, but, you know, it's wearing off now. Holy what? Um, <laughs> <laughs> You've changed. <laughs> oh, I, I mean, I like the idea of it. I like the idea of, of cocaine sharks. I think it's... I think it's. You're waiting for the movie, aren't you? I think <laughs> there, will, there will be. There's going to be one in about a week and a half on uh, on the Sci-Fi channel. Uh -huh. Cocaine sharks. Um, oh, no. 
heroin got, herrings. I've now kind of got um, that song about sharks in my head, but cocaine shark do do. Oh do. yeah, that could be at the opening it credits. Could. Yeah, yeah. Good for the sharks. Good for the sharks. Well, not so much. Um, but that's all for bus. From, that's all from the bus this week. Oh, thanks, Mike. I once knew an octopus that was on opium. It was amazing. Yeah. I what they did with the tentacles was as well, wasn't it? But um, you're welcome. Stay right there. As coming up after this short break, Lee will bring us the showbiz news. <laughs> welcome back to Chewing the Cud. And now it's time we have a look into the wonderful world of celebrity showbiz with Lee. Um, it's been a while since we've done showbiz. It has been a thought, little bit, it? I thought, let's, let's go modern, let's, let's freshen. So I'm going to talk about Cher and Britney Spears. Oh, OK. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Stay in your wheelhouse. Staying in, yeah. yeah. I, 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 you know, it's just, it, I, it just felt comfortable. You just, a pair of slippers. Cher and... Old an pair. old pair of Cher slippers um, made out of her skin. Um, anyway, let's talk about this. Um, Cher has announced her two-part memoir. Oh. Not just one, she's got enough stuff to do two. Mm. Lots of pictures. Um, oh, it's called Share the Memoir, Part <laughs> One. Um, original title. A very original. And then it's going to be Share the Memoir, Part Two. So the here's, the, here's the yeah the revenge. <laughs> here is is the the cover of Part One. Okay, um, so we're, we're going with a very old photo there. Well, to be fair, if it's Part One, then it'll be young. She might not. She might go rogue and go the last half of my life first. Well, she could so. So the publisher has said, a life too immense for only one book, and promises to reveal Cher, Cher's true story in intimate detail. Intimate. Oh. <laughs> From a dyslexic child with big dreams... <laughs> I'm a dyslexic child with big dreams. Um, to a trailblazing superstar. <laughs> That's the superstar. worst Cher impression you've ever done. I didn't, it wasn't a Cher impression. OK. Um, so it says, with her trademark honesty and humour, <laughs> Cher the memoir traces how this diamond in the rough succeeded with no plan and little confidence to become the trailblazing superstar the world has come to love. So, yeah. Okay. Um, the first part apparently will go into her early life mm -hmm. um, and her relationship with Sonny Bono. Um, I've watched a documentary on them recently. Mm. Oh, it was a little... Mm. Yeah, it was a little bit, mm, it's a little bit strange. Um, she's also opened up about the challenging of writing her memoir uh -huh. because she is dyslexic. If, if you've ever seen Cher's tweets and social media posts, it's very clear. Um, but she's kind of said um, she's chickening out on including some uncomfortable truths, but she needs to put them in. So she's she's just, it's cathartic. Um, th we've got. I mean, this is Cher over there. I mean, she's seventy odd now. She is. And, to be and fair, has no work done whatsoever. <laughs> to be fair, it's not as much as you think. No, I think it's as much as we think it's just been done well. Yeah, yeah. I think she's got a good... She's obviously not got Michael Jackson's surgeon. No. Right? No. But she's had a lot of work. Done. Yeah, but I think it's enhanced. I mean, now, mm -hmm. I've seen her in interviews and stuff, and she looks like a Thunderbirds puppet. And she doesn't seem to have movement of her neck. She's like... That's a bulldog she, clip. She goes like this. She's scared. If she moves on a bulldog clip, clips off. Oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> um, Thank you. She, <laughs> seven decades, it's, a, it's a, her career spans. Uh, she said, My life seems to be longer than any other human being ever. I feel like I should be in the Guinness Book of World Records for this, and I'm still going. Who? Oh, at wait, the end. 70 decades. Seven decades. That's seven 70 decades. years. But she's 70 years old. Well, she's nearly 80 now. And the first picture is when she was 20. Yeah. Two, four, six. Oh. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, OK. Well, she's in the 70th decade now, isn't she? OK. So six. Six. She's done six decades, so that's 60 years. OK. But she started when she was 20. Well, no, so she's talking about before she was 20. Oh, OK. Childhood. Oh, right, OK. Mm -hmm. And uh, to accompany this, we've got a new Greatest Hits album coming out. Oh, OK. Which has new stuff on it from... It can't be Greatest Hits, then. But more stuff from her last Greatest Hits. So when the, when the last Greatest Hits ended, it was progressing from there. So all okay. that shit ABBA stuff she did <laughs> and that crap Christmas song, 
that's going to go on there. So, <laughs> <Okay>. yes, <laughs> looking forward to that. Um, next bit of showbiz news, slightly younger uh, pop diva, um, Britney Spears. Okay. Um, officially, her book, her memoir, mm-hmm. is going to be turned into a film. Oh. Mm. So it's in the works with John M. Chu, who directed Legally Blonde. Blonde. Um, <laughs> Legally Blonde. Legally Blonde. Um, so that's the cover of her book there, The Woman in Me, which is not is a weird title. I, I love that um, title. Brittany, bless her. Mm. Um, so, <laughs> mm. she, she has moments where she's not very well. No, and if you've ever watched any of her clips on Instagram... She's enjoying living a life. With knives. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, anyway. Yeah, things a dildo she... if you're brave enough, that's all I'm going to say. Please do not use dildo uh, knives as dildos. Do not do it. It's not true. No. No. Shut yourself right up. Um, she has revealed on her social media mm-hmm. that she is working with Mark Platt, who's responsible for making the Legally Blonde franchise. Um, there's no word yet on who is going to play her in the film. Um, um, she, uh, But rumours are Mil- the Millie Bobby Brown, Millie Bobby Brown mm-hmm. from Stranger Things has been touted. Um, the book has sold over 2.5 million copies in the United States alone. Um, it's... Probably come at a time that Justin Timberlake's probably thinking, God, please, because he doesn't come out well in really? in this book. That um, and particularly me. as things that have happened recently. Um, the thing that, that um, people are really looking forward to is because when the, the audio book was released, Britney didn't do the audio book. It was um, Michelle, the actress. Williams. Um, <laughs> Michelle, who is it? Michelle Williams. Michelle Williams, yeah. Michelle the actress, as I like <laughs> to call her. Um, and there's, there's um, a hilarious... Po- because Justin Timberlake apparently thought he was a bit of a cool dude. Mm-hmm. And um, there is um, there is a, a, a clip where Michelle reads out that a story where Britney and uh, Justin met Genuine, the R&B singer, and he was, like, going... Um, um, Oh, yay! Faux shiz, faux shiz, genuine! What's up, homie? Um, in that voice. Wow. Choices were made. Um, and people love that. That's become, that's become a, that's become a ticker tock thing. Ticker tock. A ticker tock thing. Um, so it's, it's coming out at some point, and we'll all look forward to that. Yeah, I was going to say, it's quite, quite recently been announced, hasn't it, so... Hmm. Lots of time yet. What about if we? What about? What about? What about that? I think I could be in the film. I think Brittany. you could be in the film as Britney, as well. I wonder if Derek Barry is like sending letters off, going, "I can do you." You're older than her, though. So are you. Yeah. CGI. Anyway, last bit of showbiz news. You know I love a waxwork. You do love a waxwork. I do. Lo- I know you- During your little time away, right, the, there's been a, a lacking of waxwork news. Oh, that is so sad. It's very sad. Well, I'm going to bring some to you now. What oh, joyful. I, and I particularly enjoy a crap waxwork. You had, yes. Mm. Now, you don't like the good ones, do you? No. no. That's like, well, what's all that about? It looks like the real person. Give me one that looks like they're half melted and I'm, I'm there. <laughs> um... This is about a waxwork that was recently made of Sinead O'Connor. Obviously, Sinead O'Connor passed away mm-hmm. a couple of years ago, very sadly. But a, a, a wax museum in Dublin mm-hmm. has, is, is having to withdraw their Sinead O'Connor um, waxwork okay. amid criticism from family members and the public saying that it looked nothing like her. Okay. Um, many reacted with shock. Um, so that is... That <laughs> That is the waxwork. I mean, to be fair... It's not the worst It's the not world. the worst. If somebody said, well, who's that a waxwork of, I'd go... Sinead O'Connor. Sinead O'Connor. Maybe it's a hairstyle. Um, but yeah. I mean, to be fair, in other photographs, it looks like a mannequin from, <laughs> yeah. from CNA that's wig has fallen CNA? off. CNA? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Explain to the audience what CNA is. That, well, that's, that's the last time that model mannequins were used like that, wasn't it? Um... So the yeah. museum's team met and decided to remove the waxwork um, because 
they said that they they can do better mm-hmm. and they're going to do a more accurate representation. Um, so Sinead, they're going to give it another try. <laughs> oh, it, only it, doesn't took, com- it doesn't compare to a. <laughs> it only took seven hours and fifteen days to make it, oh, yeah, so that's probably it. why. <laughs> It looks so bad. Um, yeah. Her brother, John O'Connor, said he was shocked when he first saw it online. John O'Connor. John O'Connor. Um, it doesn't look like her at all. When I saw it online, I thought it's something like between a mannequin and something out of Thunderbirds, which, to be fair, it kind of does. The cap fits. Um, I thought Sinead would have been very fond of looking well, and she certainly did, and if she was supposed to be a representation of her in her early 20s, why didn't he just do the nothing compares to you? Which I think that's supposed to be. That's what they were for. Um, Apparently, in their defence, the owner of the waxworkers said that he was a long-term friend of Sinead O'Connor, apparently, Mm -hmm. and he thinks that she would have really enjoyed it. However, the guy that they've had that's done all their waxworks Mm -hmm. is getting on a little bit and is perhaps not as as, as, um, finessed. Uh-huh. As he used to be. Okay. So we will. So we had to take the decision to cancel the statue, and we will go again, cancel and we'll statue. remodel. What? Cancel? The yeah, statue. cancel it. Um, I don't know whether they're going to take it off, just put it in a big pan, melt it down again, <laughs> then pour it back <laughs> into the mold. Just take it so it withdraws off social media, <laughs> <laughs> withdraws from public life. Oh, <laughs> it changes the name. So we can own, and I'm sure that I will cover it again in the future when the, when it has been <laughs> revealed. Uh huh. And that is the end of this week's showbiz news. Well, thanks for that, Lee. Always nice to know that Sinead O'Connor is still making news all these years after her death. Don't go anywhere. It's coming up. We have a game for you to play along with in our Game of the Week. <laughs> Welcome back to Chewing the Cud with me, Mike Benyonro, and this one, Lee Robertson. Now it's the part of the show where we play a little game. But before I release you, this weekend it was Brighton Pride. And we shimmied along to have a little gander. Let's have a look. Of people having lots of fun. That's lovely. Which is always good. Hmm. Yeah. I, I, I've never been to Brighton Pride really? and um, you've never sent us, so that's a little bit selfish. So, so that was fun to go to. Yeah, had fun. But now it's time for our game. And this is for the man who has more glasses than a Timmy Mallet impersonator. It's Lee. So off you pop. I don't appreciate that reference. You know, nobody else well, it's will get it. Sue Pollard, which is what somebody else said. <laughs> That's what I was going to go for. But now they're dead. <laughs> Sue Pollard's not dead. Game of the week. So now we're going to play a game of myth or no myth, and this is where Lee's got a load of cards. I get to pick a letter and try and work out whether he's telling me a big dirty lie or not. Are you ready, Lee? Yes, I am. Have we welcome you? Sorry. Um, um, so, the choices of, of letters you've got m, y, t, h, t, r, o, t, h. Bless. Um, I would like to go for a second T, please. Okay. Oh. Oh. 
Microzamia trees in Australia uh-huh. can live for up to 15,000 years. They can indeed. Yes, they can. It's the truth. Oh, okay. It is true. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, still on nature. I've not picked a letter. There's, there's two on. There's two. I just oh, oh, I forget to pick a new letter now I've done a card. Keep going on with your gay abandon. <laughs> I will go for an M for Mike then, please. Here it is. So this is about the world. Myths or facts about the world. Myth or no myth? The UK is the only country in the world that isn't required to put its name on postage stamps. It's true. It's true. It is true. I'm clever, me. Yeah. Apparently. Have you read these before? No. No? Okay. Um, so you don't want the second one of this? Go on then, I'll do no, 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 it's fine, we'll do the second one then. Go on, two, there's two things on them. Go on then, we'll do the second one. Second one is the UK has produced more recipients... The UK has produced more recipients of Nobel Prizes than any other country. That's false. It is, it is a myth. Can I get to pick something now, or are you going to just keep going on without oh, what I want? No, go, go ahead. There's only two per card. Okay. Um, I will go for a H, please. A what? A H. A P? H. Oh. <laughs> so, in front of you are the two words spelled out myth and truth. Mm-hmm. So this is, this is about health. Heroin? So, cutting your hair will help it grow back faster and thicker. And uh, that's not true. It is, it is, in fact, a myth. I knew that for a fact. This... But if you shave your pubs off, they come back full bush. Itchy. <laughs> um, alcohol helps you sleep. Mm, now, this is tricky, because it does actually make you go to sleep quicker, but it's not good restful sleep, so you don't go into the deep REM sleep. So it's true and false. Well, it says myth here. So, you know. There we go. <laughs> um, so you've had a mem, you've had a H, and you've had a T. You've had a mem. <laughs> and a mem. mem. And what would you like to go for now? A U, please. I would like you. A U. This is celebrity. Okay. Um, Hitler's was modern. Hitler's <laughs> favorite. <laughs> Hitler's favorite film star was Charlie Chaplin. Did you write these questions, Lee? Hmm? Did you write these? Sorry, were you having a nap? No. no. <laughs> what? He dozed off, love. Um, did you write these questions? No. Okay, just because it's of era appropriateness. So um, steps. <laughs> Remember, dancing away to steps in the old folks' home. Um, I'm going to say true. It was true. Hitler also liked Blackpool. He did. Yeah, he didn't want to bomb Blackpool. If no. It was a great place to be. Wanted to save it. Yeah. So the second one. Uh-huh. The depiction of Tinkerbell in Walt Disney's 1953 version of Peter Pan was based on the measurements of Marilyn Monroe. It wasn't that small. Tinkerbell's this big. No, use your use your common sense, Mike. For God's sake, it's obviously that it's a cartoon, isn't it? And it's a fairy, but they <laughs> they <laughs> they modelled it on. <laughs> use your common sense, Mike. It was a cartoon fairy. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say true because it's bizarre. It's a myth. Oh, okay. Because Tinkerbell was didn't have big chest. <laughs> you tried not to say boobs? And yeah, I was. I didn't have those womanly curves that Marilyn Monroe had. Marilyn Monroe didn't have massive breasts, so people. It's one of those um, thingy bobby effects. What's it called? Mandela effect where they think she had a massive rack, and she didn't. Having the question of, did Nelson Mandela have a massive rack from the gallery? And yes, yes, he did. Known for his bajongas, he was. 
That's the Mandela effect. Massive tits. Wow. Talking of massive tits, let's go for a U. A U? Another U? Is that what you said? <laughs> yeah. This is about the w this is about the world. According to English myth, Pontius Pilate was burnt. <laughs> there is too many P's then. According to English myth, Pontius Pilate was born in Perthshire. Or Perthshire. True. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Jackie. Yeah, 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 that's true. Another one then. Um, yeah. According to English myth, the Holy Grail was brought to Britain by Judas Iscariot. Judas Chalmers? By Judith Chalmers. She put it in a hand luggage. <laughs> <laughs> After she'd been to Torremolinos. Ooh, Torremolinos. <laughs> oh, Bella Medina. Um, I think that's false. It is indeed a myth. Yeah. But who? Yeah. Um, Judas Chalmers was not involved in the Holy Grail at all. No. But she did get thrush in, um, in, in <laughs> Tenerife. Because it was very hot. <laughs> is that something you know or you just made up? Just made it up. So it's a lie. So just because she did... In yeah. fact, just swap the Judas Chalmers with my name. That's what happened. <laughs> You got thrush in Torremolinos? Got thrush in Torremolinos. How did you get thrush in, to thrush in Torremolinos? My mum wouldn't let me take my woolen swimming, <laughs> swimming trunks off. What? Got overheated. <laughs> got a yeast infection. Have you seen that woman on um, social media who makes food out of a yeast infection? She did what out of a yeast infection? She makes breads out of a yeast infection. Hmm. So she used it to ferment bread and stuff. Um, and it backfired because last time she did it, she, I think it was yogurt she made, and she ended up with oral thrush. Uh. Stick around, because coming after this short break, Leah brings us some more creative side of his mind as we go into Crafty Queens. Welcome back. You are still watching Mike and Leah chewing the cud. This time we do something that Lee referred to as the dog's bollock. Well, it's Crafty Queens with Lee. Got two things. Uh huh. Firstly, yeah. When I was away having a break, yeah, a break. Um, <laughs> a you break promised <laughs> that this would be that I would never have to do this ever again. Uh huh. And secondly, who's been wearing this tabard Me. when I've not been here? Me, I have. Because it stinks. It stink. Well, be thankful I gave it a rinse through. It was covered in all sorts. Mmm. Uh, anywho. Um, Mike, do you like food? Semen is a persistent stain. Um, yes, I do like food. I like to put things in my mouth. Do you also like mermaids? I, I, I like the idea of a mermaid. However, practically, it doesn't work. How would you feel about combining the two? What, an impractical? Food and mermaids. I'm going to say yes, because I have to. Yeah, because that's what we're going to do today. It is the latest trend. When I say latest, it's probably been on TikTok for about six years. And when you say um, trend? Yeah. <laughs> one person's done it. We're going we're gonna to make, um, we're going to make the little mermaid out of a hot dog. I apologise, I should have killed the segment off. Yeah, well, who's, who's, to fault, who's to blame here? Yeah. Go on then, let's, let's make this mermaid out of a hot dog. So I have furbished you with, a, an, with an array of, of different accoutrements <laughs> yeah, to, to, to make um, this. Uh -huh. So, um, first of all, uh, mm -hmm. you need to take one of your hot dog buns. I think I'm going to need significantly bigger buns. We, no, we, we, we don't, because the sausages it, aren't very big. Um, no. Um, and then I want you, <laughs> I want you to cut your hot dog bun open um, d uh, diagonally. Diagonally. Diagonally down the. That's not diagonally. Do you want me to go all the way through? No, because we still need to have. We, it needs to be like um, like a little resting place. So kind of like just open it up. Do I need to go to the tip? Yeah, just yes. like that. Oh, like that. 
I have opened up okay. my ready, ready vagina. Now I have provided you with with a number of of, of hot dog sausages. Uh huh. Oh. Um, you just choose any one, really. I don't think it matters which one you were. Uh, I eat them. Doesn't look like a mermaid at the moment. Momentarily, it will. Um, so I, <laughs> I have um, provided you with a pair of scissors. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. It's not to you whether you want to use scissors or whether you want to use your knife. Because what you're going to do is you're going to create some. <laughs> You're going to create some arms in the hot dog okay. by um, kind of slicing. Yeah. Kind of like a little bit near the top. It's kind of almost like to release a little bit of a flap. Okay. Can you see like that? You want me to create a flap out of my hot dog? Yeah. Okay. Um, it is. It, it mustn't detach. Okay. It must remain on there. Right, doing that on just on one side or both sides? Both sides, because it needs two arms. <laughs> like smart arms. Now, if we would we were actually going to cook these, um, these little arm slits would open up more. Okay. But we're not cooking them, so you know they're just. I have arm slits. You've got arm slits now. Yeah. Okay. Then you need to take your mouth. Take your take your um knife uh -huh. and make a little mouth hole okay in where it would possibly be a mouth okay um i've created a little hole at the top where there would be a mouth you might need to carve it out i have done so oh mine's going oh what have you done to your heart dog? it snapped off well that's no good you I need to use do it on one. purpose you asked me to carve bits out of it. It wasn't structurally very sound as a piece of tubular meat. You've got to be gentle. I was gentle. Hang on, let me just cut my mouth out. Oh, I've given you it a bit of a with a couple. Can I just use a different hot dog? Yeah, just use a different hot dog. Okay. That's why I've given you three. Play, place that in, in the... <laughs> place that how it feels. in the hot dog. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's in the middle of it. So it's like on a little bed. Yeah. Now, I've provided you with some capers. Like that? No, you need to open it a bit more than that. You open the, the thing a bit more. Like that? I can't see. Yes, that's that. That's fine. Yeah, I wondered what that bit of schmutter was. Um, i provided you with some capers. Please. Oh, no, are there capers? Or they're, that's, they're, they're peppercorns. Peppercorns. So, You're yeah. going to... Use these as eyes, so you're gonna press them into just above your the into mouth. the flesh of my meat. Yeah. Oh, you might actually have to make a little hole. Well, I'm not going to be able to because I've got a, a, a separation of the meat happening. Because again, it's not structurally sound. Right there, you are. I've, I've created eyes. Oh, that's hideous. Um, That's a bit like Stevie Wonder. Um, so, <laughs> so now the magic's going to happen because we're going to make them into actual mermaids. Okay. So, <laughs> so I provided you with some, some lettuce. Uh -huh. And what you're going to do is you're going to, with your scissors, fashion um, some tail fins to okay. go at the bottom. So you just need to chop... The leaf. Okay, I've created a tail fin. Into a, like a little, and then place it on the um, bottom of the hot dog to create its tail. Ooh. Like that. Well, I mean, if that if you're happy with that, Mike, that's fine. Um, happy is a strong word for what I'm doing here, Lee. Mine looks more like a mermaid's tail. Of course it does. Yeah. Um, and then you're going to fashion a little... Because obviously this is a female um, little mermaid. Okay. Um, so it needs a little bra top. Um, so you're going to cut a little bra out of a bra shape out of your leaf. Mine's a male mermaid. Is yours a man? We need to cover the nips. Well, it needs some nipples then. If it's a man, you need to um, 
you need to mush a couple of peppercorns, into, peppercorns it. into its chest. It's going to put a little bra on. I might need to just tuck my tuck the edges of my bra in. <laughs> so, I just want to point out the fact that my merman is quite sensitive over the position of his nipples and would like no judgment. Oh dear. Where's his tail? Is it still there? there? Okay. We're going to give it some hair. Okay. And um, in in this in this handy dildo dildo. Um, that are filled with tomato sauce. Just, just unclick the bit at the top. So cut now, the top off. And then, now you've got to be careful. I'm yeah? going to test it first on a bit of leaf because I cut don't know how off. fast it... What do you do? No, cut you don't do off. that. Just the flicky lid the bit. Oh, at the bottom. Oh. You said cut the top off. Oh. Okay. It comes out quite quickly. Okay, what am I doing with this? You're gonna make hair with the tomato sauce. So I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna um, woo, um, give it long hair. Because mine is very airy. Oh, mine's. <laughs> I have no good aim with this. That's just being silly. I've got hair on it. Now. You're saying I'm being silly. That's not. That's not. That's not taking it seriously. <laughs> <laughs> that's like it's been decapitated. It's under the been to Turkey for under the sea. <laughs> Um, so if you're happy with whatever thing you've done there, the final bits are to put a bit of sand in. So I have got um, dried onions. So you can just sprinkle that at the bottom. And then if you want to add a little bit of colour, I've also provided you with some um, hundreds and thousands. I'm just going to sprinkle mine. Well, that looks like it's got a dick in its mouth. I'll have to get rid of that. Um, we'll have no, no fellation here. Ooh. Go. Okay. And you should have an absolutely beautiful little mermaid hot dog remember if you can't get any vagine or a bit of peen you can always be a crafty queen can't get any peen or any vagine or anything in between i can say it how i want to where's your um where's your mermaid i don't know i did i disappeared What's that? What's that red stuff around your mouth, Mike? Very personal. I'd like not to draw attention to it. Why can I smell like hot dog juice? Well, sorry. You just cross your legs. <laughs> Did you eat it, Mike? I'm out done. That's almost the end of the show for now, but on screen you can see our contact details. It's at the Cud TV on your social media, and if you want to catch up with previous episodes, you can always binge us on YouTube. Look out for chewing the cud. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you all soon. Bye. Bye. I want to put this.